Welcome, and thank you for joining me for another whiskey review. Today, we're going to take a look at another one of Dustin's Cavalans. Dustin, what do we got? All right, guys, we have one of the Solstices, which uh, this is one of the fancy box ones. Mm, nice and box. And we are looking at, yeah, I mean, magnets, felt finished, they went all out. Um, and they're great at making sure your bottle falls out of them, so don't trust the box. Absolute trap with these Cavalans with these fancy fancy boxes. Yep. So this one is the uh, Moscatel Sherry Cask. Were these all single cask, Dustin? They're all single cask. So every one of them, they're going to give you a, a code that tells you when it was barreled, and they're going to give you a code that tells you when it was bottled. We're looking at about a six-year-old whiskey being aged in subtropic conditions. So yeah, this uh, bottle is uh, one seventeen of. 500 inks. I love to do obscure bottles here. You know, if there's only four or five or at the most 4,000 bottles made up, probably try to do what I can bring it to you. <laughs> this one comes at a whopping 55.6% ABV. And Dustin, I have loved every one of these. And there's a few bottles, as you know, I am a huge fan of. Yep. And have overbought crazy. But that's what we do when we love a whiskey. And this one is no exception. This one has the purple sash on it, as opposed to the blue one that we did last time. Do the um, we did a red sash. We haven't done the blue yet. Oh, we haven't done the blue. Yet. Uh, we what, just purchased the blue. What what do the sashes mean? Uh, basically, these are the premium high end bottles that you're going to see. So is that like a ribbon in Taiwan or something? Uh, you know, I don't know. And it's got a nice little like metal on it too, which is glued on there, and it's on there pretty decent. So yeah, packaging, I got to say, top notch on them. I've got a few complaints. Now, what we brought to the group before was the manzanilla finish. This mm -hmm. one, you can always can tell. Mm -hmm. I have a PX that we're going to bring in at some point here. I'm still waiting for that one to finish opening up because mm -hmm. it's improving. And then there's an Amontillado, which I don't have yet. Um, so if you see one for under 350, let me know. Find him a D2 self. So I likened that the purple was probably what, first place or fifth? This is. I think it's actually the participation trophy you and your kid. Oh! Well, so I was born in the 70s. We didn't get participation trophies. We just got a lecture from our dad on the ride home if we lost. Yeah. Uh, my elementary school, we did get participation ribbons. Yeah. And those were basically the ones that you threw away on your way out. When you? Everyone millennial. did. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't your fault. All right. So all of these... Oh, we're kidding. So all of these <laughs> are natural color, unchill filtered. Uh, this is a distillery that as soon as you turned me on to them, I have been nothing but impressed with. Yeah. Um, I had my doubts. I had my doubts. You know, single malt whiskey, um, aged in Taiwan. Um, didn't know really what to expect. Uh, you shared a few with me. I was impressed with them. Yep. And then here we go. I got a few of my own bottles, and I've not been disappointed with one. And once again, something nice little treat on all of these is a goofy little car on the cork. If someone knows what the heck that means, let me know. Yeah. It seems odd, but uh, we're still unsure on that one. I'm sure there's a story uh, behind it. Well, you know, you tell somebody these are these retail in the 550 range of total wines here in the U.S. Not cheap. Not cheap. Uh, that said, I have yet to pay anywhere close to that for these. They are going on sale everywhere. And we might have another video coming up where we talk about uh, the value proposition and what the market looks like on these. Sounds good. One thing I do appreciate about this distillery, the kind of, uh, as soon as I got my first bottle, gave me a nice reassurance, is they spell whiskey with no E. There you go. And it means nothing, but it means everything. All right. It, so Even a few bourbons that do that, by the way. <clears throat> do really? Yeah. Don't, did it say whiskey with no weed? No, there's a couple. Yeah, believe it or not. Okay, let's get to the nose. I mean, this is just straight sherry sweetness. Mm. It is, it's grapey. Uh, maybe that's why they chose the, the participation award here, but it is very, very grapey. It, yeah, there is a very Welsh um, grape juice or grape, grape cola type smell to it instantly. Now, I mean, it goes beyond sherry. You know what yeah, I'm saying? And you know, you're right. There is a absolute, there's a cola note in that as well. At the very end, I mean, it's like a, almost a, because it even be getting into Dr. Pepper range. What do you think about Crush sodas, Orange Crush and Grape Crush? Um, I haven't had one since I was a kid, but I remember liking them quite a bit. I also will entertain uh, some of the, the people that uh, buy materials off of me, mm -hmm. bringing pizzas every once in a while. I always try to get a Crush of one or the other, either grape or orange. Yeah. Um. You're definitely getting some oak at the end here, but the sherry is so intense, so dominant, that it is overpowering everything else about this whiskey. Okay, moving along from my soda conversation. Yes. <laughs> yes, besides the, besides that grape note, yes, the oak note comes in really, really nice. You can tell this distillery is using quality, quality cask and not sparing much expense yeah. as far as the cask that they use, because wow, man, they, what they get out of these whiskeys is just what I used to get out of, say, McAllen, 
You know, when you get the 18 year olds that were say the 1991 or the 1993 vintage of the 18 years old, just rich, good cast sherry, but at a higher ABV. I think we've been over this a few times. We are just completely blown away by the quality of wood that is being picked by these guys. They are, mm. as you said, they are sparing no expense. They are going after bodega cask, or maybe they're finishing the, maybe they're finishing it there on site. I don't know, but whatever they're doing, like they are just, they are getting the best of the best cask they can get. You know, when I first got into Scotch, you know, buddies got me into it, in laws got me into it, and they love the sherry whiskeys. Yeah. In, in general, they love the Macallan. You know, yeah. the old McCallans. Um, now, while those were always 43% ABV, you could taste the quality of the wood in the old McCallans. Yeah, well, absolutely. And this is what's really replaced it for me. You know, I, I can get a McCallan 18, even McCallan 25, the newer versions of them, the ones that come up since um, since um, they sold to Remy Martin. I have not gotten that richness from Cass from a McCallan 18 or 25 since... Yeah. It, they, I'm sorry, Edrington. They, they sold the Edrington Remy bottle, to Edrington. Yeah. yeah, so since the Remy versions, which I don't know when exactly that ended, I have not gotten anywhere close to that richness since then. And this is even richer than the McCallans were to begin with when Remy did, when Remy did on them. Yeah, we've, uh, we've done comparisons uh, fairly recently of like the old McCallan cast strength versus yes. a, uh, a $150 store pick Cavalan sherry cast. And I picked that over the straight age statement 10 year old McCallum cast. Yeah, and honestly, I don't, it was closer than I, it was close ish. Sure. But it wasn't that close. Wasn't that close. Yeah. I mean, so, I mean, the point is, they're doing some really great things with the cast on this one. The nose is just wonderful. It's yeah. oak, it's, it's sherry. It's just, it's a depth of sherry that's it's hard to describe. Like, people it's hear rich. sherry, it's so rich, it's so deep. It just keeps intensifying as you bring it in it, whereas just you know waves of it yeah you, you get a say a tamdu 15 which is a very well made whiskey in today's market i think mm -hmm. you scored it in the 90s that was a mistake i agree uh, but anyway it's a well made whiskey it, they use good casks and probably the best 15 year old casks on the market uh, in scotland right it, now. it was an impressive 46 For, you know mass whiskey. produced it was an impressive yeah. 46 percent whiskey that whiskey you're picking up all kinds of different notes this is just deep never ending sherry it's almost like the sherry's mixed with some type of mahogany wood that was liquefied. Yeah. I even get a touch of, you know that grape medicine you had as a kid that was like really delicious? Yeah, a grape soda. No, no, the medicine. The yeah. grape soda too, yeah. Yes, yeah, have, have a drink, go to sleep. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No there, participation, Joe, remember? Yeah, there's a hint of that here too. <laughs> yeah, this is just excellent, excellent sherry whiskey. Nose is beautiful, long, rich, full. Just it really sets the standard for what a good sherry matured cast strength whiskey could be, at least on the nose. Dustin, what are you picking up on the palate? Yeah. Oh, so up front, oak actually takes the, as it, it, it takes over, and it's a really nice, creamy middle of the palate, middle of the road sweet oak, and it's driven with this really nice. And I don't have a lot of them. Um, Moscatel is not a sherry finished whiskey. I've had a lot of. Mm -mm. Um, but it's very kind of plummy, grapey, sweet, not overly drying like an Oloroso, not overly sweet like a PX, but kind of in between the two. Yeah, the only other Moscatel I've ever had was the Lagavulin 16, the uh, 2017, I believe, facial release. I know the one you're talking about is delicious. Yeah, it was. It, it's a stickier sherry whisk, or stickier sherry in general to me, but I always got kind of a raisin note to it, yeah. like raisin skin. I and said I plum, you said raisin. Yeah, same, it's close. Same market. Uh, but then it, it it turns up again more oomph on the end, where the sherry gets bolder, richer, and the oak gets spicier, and it's the oak is spicy, unbelievable on that finish, Mike. Yeah, that oak is just raisin spice, mm -hmm. ra ra and it's almost like God, it's almost venturing into almost like a like a like a slight nutmeg and mm. cinnamon. Like I just got no nutmeg and cinnamon on the nose when you're saying that. Yeah, I mean, it's, it, so it, when I add a couple drops you of did, water, add the water, it's even cut out even more. It, it makes me, it makes me think of Christmas. There might even be a clove in there. Yeah, it almost like that sweetness is almost kind of churning over to brown sugar. Oh, totally brown sugar. Man, oh. brown this, sugar. this is what I'm talking about about a good wood policy. This is a five year old whiskey. You yep. know what I mean? Those transitions that you get the smoothest. This is fifty five point eight. This isn't an alcohol forward whiskey at no. all. I think my point is, if you have a super low ABV whiskey. That's enough alcohol to where this is no longer going to have a kick. And it's incredible. I mean, this does not taste like there is cast drink whiskey in the mm -hmm. glass. 
But yep. it's got the richness of it. It's got the sweetness, but no alcohol. When you were mentioning earlier, this is your first drink of the day, and I said you're done. You're not going to something else after this. Even a peated whiskey, you're not going to be able to take like the tannins and the richness mm. of that sherry just sticks to the sides of the mouth, and man, you're, it's not something you're getting off quickly. Now, you know, we've, we, we talked about this. Actually, the first time we ever got together, we put together a lineup of whiskeys to drink. And we said, you know, all right, we're going to do this one because it's light. We're going to do this one. We're going to put the bourbon over here because it needs a little time to open up. And then we're going to go in and do our peated. And mm -hmm. then we're ending with the super sherry. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people make the mistake of peat last, not sherry. Sherry Always. goes last. When you're talking first fill. It sticks with you. And it, it fries you. We're done drinking after this thing because. The sherry whiskeys. We, <clears throat> yeah, we have to stick with sherry pretty yeah, much. Yeah, we'll stick to the cab lines. No, it's good. But yeah, I mean, it's a very dense, rich long lasting experience that you're not going to shake off very easy whatsoever. Um, here's, where, here's where I'm going to, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, no, no, no. I was going to say, with, with water, mm -hmm. I got to tell you, man, it opened this thing up so much more. I'm yeah. just picking up a slight bit of ginger with it too. Yeah. Almost like a, and also like a, um, um, ginger and wasabi, like almost like the ginger you get in the way of a sushi, like the pieces of it. Man, just an excellent whiskey. So what I was getting ready to say there was, with the water in there, the level of refinement in this glass is incredible. It actually improved. Yeah, but it's just, it's complex, it's deep, there's just, there's not an off note in here. Mm -mm. Almost any whiskey I have, there's a note that I sit back and go, you know, somebody out there might think this is off. Even if I like it. Sure. Like Octomores, there are definitely some notes on there where I'm like, you know, it's sourdough bread. Well, yeah, there, there's something there where might, I, I, I can see where someone might be, uh, you know what I mean, yeah. if you like a more refined palate. But I, I got to tell you, even after all of this, all of the notes we said, now finally that Cavalan distillery characteristic that I call Dusty Oak is coming up finally. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And again, you only get this with normally with super aged scotches. I don't know what they're doing in that climate, man, but for five years, it almost seems unfair they could get that yeah. out of their whiskey. Well, so I actually went and looked at a map of like where like the climate lines are. Mm-hmm. They're just like a couple miles away from being subtropic. Mm -hmm. They're not quite subtropic, but just above it. And then they're a couple miles inland from the sea. So they're not quite getting sea, but they're close to the sea. I don't know exactly what that's doing, but man, it is working for them. South Carolina. I think they're a lot south of South Carolina. Okay. Like subtropic, we're getting like south of Florida, man. Yeah, so see, I thought half of Florida was in the tropics. I didn't come here for geography. Yeah, I didn't either. <laughs> Bottom line is this is this is in the really, really hot regions. It's on an island and it's working. Whatever they're doing. I mean this drinks twenty this drinks like a twenty five year old scotch. Oh absolutely. I gotta tell you, you if you're love shared scotches in general, you owe it to yourself to get get your hands on one of this. I was very skeptical as a scotch lover first myself. Mm -hmm. Um but uh I was converted. I'm a fan. Yeah, I mean I'll I be honest. Money on. You know who got me into this? Give it to me. J.O. at the Party Source. Oh, good old J.O. Yep, yeah, and now he's uh, got his own channel. He's doing um, the Bourbon Know-It-Alls. Yeah, let's go check J.O. out. He's a great guy. Yep, check it out. But he gave me uh, the entire line of Cavallons they had open, which included a couple solstices. And I was like, oh, dear God, J.O., how much are these things? And then I, I saw the prices, and I went, never mind. And then this one went on sale, and I said yes. I tell you what, the party source was a great place to drink samples at. Before, oh, it was, yeah. Before COVID, I mean, even before COVID, like probably 2007, 2008, you got some great whiskey Unbelievable, there. yeah. Figure out what you wanted to buy. It was really, they did it the right way, the party source. Yeah. All right, so what are you as far as whiskey score on this one? Mike, I feel like this is the highest rated day we've ever had here, and I'm at a 92. This is $600 whiskey, in my opinion. See, now this is why I usually say my whiskey score before you. So you seem like the one riding coattails, but I'm absolutely at a 92 <laughs> out of 100. You're right. Every whiskey we've had today has been a dynamite whiskey. Two 92s and 191. This is a 92 out of 100. Just excellent, excellent whiskey. This is right up there with some of the best shared whiskeys I've ever had in my day. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, this is, again, 25-plus-year-old cast drink whiskey. It's comparable. Lovely, lovely stuff. Get your hands on this. I highly recommend it, especially if you're a shared whiskey fan. Uh, we want to, once again, thank you for joining for another whiskey review. I'll see you in the comment section, but Dustin, until next time, what do we wish the folks? Happy drinking. We'll see you then.